Okay, so we are <clears throat> week three, I think it is, of this uh, little series on worship. And tonight we're actually going to be taking a look at worship as most of us know it in song. Amen. A lot of different ways to worship that we're, we kind of been looking at throughout this, this month here. Tonight, we're going to take a look at song a little bit deeper. Amen? Let's open a word of prayer. Father, we thank you tonight for your word. We thank you for this cool study on worship, Lord, and, and all that you've shown us and revealed to us tonight. And Lord, we invite your Holy Spirit to be with us tonight as we open, that you open our eyes and our ears and our hearts to the message you have for us in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. So, why worship in song? Anyway, we've already talked about worshiping in service. Um, We've talked about the, the root words of worship, what a worshiper is, false worship, um, idol worship. We've kind of gone over a lot of different, uh, different definitions of what the word worship means, that we get the word worship, but um, in the Greek and Hebrew, there's a lot more to it. But this is a gift that God gave us, I believe anyway, um, because... There's, there's worship and prayer. We, we talked about that as well as we, uh, we talked to God about things. And, and not just the, uh, <clears throat> you know, the laundry list that we go down of stuff sometimes, but some of those, uh, those times where you really open up your heart to God and you're just having a word. Well, worship is something that, that God gave us, man, and it's such a fantastic gift. Music. Is, is a gift from God. If you guys think back, even like before you were saved and stuff, everybody had their favorite songs, you know, and they had their heartbreak songs and they had their party songs and, and they had their mixtapes that they made. For you uh, younger ones here, we would put songs on a little device that was called a cassette tape. And it, it went into a machine that was hungry all the time. <laughs> And if you didn't have a pencil in your car, you weren't going to get to, <laughs> I know, memories, right? Anyway, let's open up here, and uh, we're going to be looking at Psalm 98 to start this thing up. The first one is this, the power of song. So we already know from childhood that music and songs have great power in our life. The, the songs that we grew up listening to, and, and it always seemed like, you know, the writers of these songs just like, look into your soul, man. You know, every word was perfect, you know, and you'd, you'd, they would say everything that you want to say to somebody or, or whatnot. Well, when, it, when things, for me anyway, um, you know, growing up, as I've, I've been a musician since I was 11 years old. And I ripped off my mom's Yamaha guitar from her. She was going to try to learn, but she never did. She had tiny little hands. And... The very first song I wrote, I was 11 years old, and it was called Sunshine Lady, and it was about my mom. <laughs> really bad song, but she thought it was really good. And then, I, I don't remember if that's when I burned the school down, but I got put on restriction anyway for like a long time. And this guy, Mac Lanham, was a blues guy, and he came over and started teaching me some blues stuff, and I was still mad at my mom. And so I wrote, a, my second song was called Get a Place of My Own. <laughs> Yeah, and this went on for years, man. And uh, you know, I have this—I have this little folder at home in my safe because it, it's there's like 75 songs in there, man. That, and there's not even all of them. I used to have suitcases of stuff that I'd write, and I started reading them. And man, there's country songs and blues songs and rock songs and all this stuff. But it's like this big diary of my life. It's really a trip, man. And long before I ever got saved, there's a lot of reference to searching. And Jesus, I just didn't know that that's what was going on. And then as time went on, um, you know, my mom would tell me, well, you know, because obviously I didn't get famous, you know, as a musician. It doesn't help cutting your fingers off when you're a guitar player either, right? And she had told me that, I think I shared with you, that maybe that God's plan for me was to write songs about Jesus. And I'm like, yeah, I don't think so. You know, you're not going to be playing too many Jesus songs in a bar which is where I pretty much played. And then lo and behold, mom was right. Amen. And now we've just got stacks. So 
the, the thing about worship is that somewhere along the line, God spoke to somebody's heart about something. <clears throat> it's almost like prophesying, kind of. I don't mean like reading the future. I mean about speaking out what God has put on somebody's heart. And I believe that that's the reason why so many worship songs are so powerful to us. When we hear them and we read the words and it, you can just get completely enveloped and consumed by the words of that song that your heart and God's heart start connecting. And as we go through this, I'll show you how that works. But look at Psalm 98. Let's kick it off right here. And it goes like this. Oh, sing to the Lord a new song. For he has done marvelous things. His right hand and his holy arm have gained him the victory. And I love that beginning of that verse, sing him a new song. Um, and, it, and it's not just about when we get saved, we give our life to Christ, you know, and, and we feel the victory in our life and we want to sing, we want to worship him. But all through our lives, as we continue to have victories and blessings in God, to continue a new song, and I don't mean necessarily excuse me, like a brand new song with new words and stuff like that, which is okay too. But to continue in our worship with him when we're singing out to him and we're worshiping in, in this language of music, you know, that we're recognizing the blessings and we're recognizing the, the victories and we're recognizing his, his holiness in our life. And so maybe even though it's the same song, it, they they become deeper and deeper and deeper. Does that make sense? As we're we're getting closer and closer to him. And he says, The Lord has made known his salvation. His righteousness he has revealed in the sight of the nations. He has remembered his mercy and his faithfulness to the house of Israel. And all the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. So through this this form of worship, evangelism is certainly one way. Um, as the apostles went out around the world and evangelized and all that stuff. And then, you know, through the years, the, the various <clears throat> outreach kind of stuff, like the Billy Grahams and stuff like that. But music has always been paramount. Before I got saved, and probably many of you grew up singing Christmas carols about Jesus, man. And that, those are worship songs to Jesus. But for me, it was like, that's a really cool song, you know, and I'd sing it and stuff like that. Didn't really understand what it meant and so the world and, and you can hear these like in german you know and italian and all kinds of different languages and stuff like that and you, you don't understand unless you speak the language but you understand the melody of it and immediately you know exactly what that song's about and and it's such a gift you know you can hear something um just like the first couple notes of a song that you loved back in the 60s or 70s. And man, not only do you pick it up right away because it's just lodged somewhere in our spirit, but all the memories come flooding back, right, of the songs and, you know, where you were and what you were doing. Music is so powerful and undoubtedly why God gave us that gift so that when we're worshiping him in that way in song and music, it's memorable. It's something that, that sticks with us and it's a connection that that we make that's different from prayer it's not the same as prayer it's something very different he goes on to say this so shout joyfully to the lord all the earth break forth in song rejoice and sing praises it's powerful it's good for us as well as him but it's also good for others as we'll get to in a second here he says sing to the lord with the harp and with the harp and the sound of a psalm with the trumpets and the sound of a horn shout joyfully before the Lord, the King, let the sea roar and all its fullness, the world and those who dwell in it. People listen to this stuff. They hear you. Check this out. Do you consider God worthy of our worship and all the, the ways we worship, right? But this song it, it brings community together. When we're all singing worship songs, you know, and there, there's some that are way more powerful, you know, worship songs that are, that are out there and written and stuff. And, and then there's some that are louder, like at the Roadhouse, yeah. the blues stuff and all that. But you know what? It's not so much about the style, whether it's country or rock or blues or traditional or hymnals or anything like that. It's about where it puts you 
in relation to God in that moment. You can be anywhere. You can be at home. You can be in your car. But when we're together worshiping, man, there, there's something about voices. When, when I was a youth pastor, we took the kids out to acquire the fire. Like we had like 20 teens or something. I don't remember how many were. But we got there. It was like in San Diego, I think. And there was like 4,000 teenagers in this gigantic arena thing or something like that. And, you know, the, they had some really great bands playing, you know, uh, more contemporary kind of stuff. Anyway, one of them along, somewhere along the line, there just came into this real worship song, a lot of keyboards and stuff like that. The lighting, you know, was doing its thing and the, the fog machines were all going. And all these kids, man, they all had their hands up in the air. And I, get, I can't even describe the power that was in that room. You would think the ceiling was going to blow off of that place, man. It was palpable. You could feel the energy and the worship in that room. It was, it was just a, an experience I think you, you have to experience to truly, you know, get it. But check this one out over here in Samuel. Let me show you another bit of power here. Second, or First Samuel something, 16. Then Saul sent to Jesse, saying, Please let David stand before me, for he has found favor in my sight. And so it was when, whenever the Spirit from God was upon Saul that David would take up a harp and play it with his hand. Then Saul would become refreshed and well, and the distressing spirit would depart from him. Now, Saul had some big issues, there's no doubt about that. But the idea behind this was is that with the Spirit of God, worship is healing. And I'm sure that many of you have experienced that when you go through life and there's depression or anxieties or angers and things like that. It's really hard to stay in that place when you really allow worship to do its thing. When you really sit there and sing unto the Lord and just worship Him, it can take the worst of days and level them out and even take them into a whole nother place. Amen? Though when we're... You know, we, we see a lot of that in the Bible where it talks about praying and singing. And there's a great connection there. You know, at the end of the Last Supper, before they went to the garden, you know what they did? They sang a hymn. They sang a song together and they prayed. And I think that that has a lot to do with our prayer lives as well. If you have things that are going on in your life, I mean, we talk to Dad all the time. I understand that. But my thoughts are is this, that when we're, really struggling through stuff in life and we need to talk to God about this stuff and we, maybe we don't even know where to start. You know what? We live in a, a time where you can click on a computer or even your phone and you can pull up worship songs like that, man. You don't even have to like put CDs in and search for them or anything like that. And maybe you might want to give this a try to do this like, like David did with Saul. And let that music just start to work in your spirit. And then kind of move into the things that you're talking to dad about. It might, you might just find that it puts you on a whole different level. Amen. It's just something worth trying that you can write down there. But check this one out now over in Zephaniah. The other, the other side of this thing from his perspective. All right, I love this verse. Check it out. It says, Sing, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O Israel. Be glad and rejoice with all your heart. And this is important, man. When we're, uh, again, it's like, it's not exactly prayer, but we're certainly having a conversation with God. We're, we're worshiping on Him. We're praising on Him. And it ought to be glad and joyful when we're doing this. And it generally, it usually is. And sometimes they get a little bit crazy and, you know, there's a, a whole lot of joy that's going on. He says, O daughter of Jerusalem, the Lord has taken away your judgment. He has cast out your enemy. The king of Israel and the Lord is in your midst, and you shall see disaster no more. We have reason to worship in song. We absolutely have. Everybody in this room has something in their life or many things in their life that they can attribute to God that is better or they had victory in. Amen? I have, for sure. There's things going on in your life as well. And the point is, sing unto the Lord. Even when you're joyful and you're happy and you're in victory, sing unto the Lord. When you're going through the valley in distress, um, 
struggling through stuff, sing unto the Lord. Just sing unto the Lord and see where it takes you from that point. But look at this. It says, in that day he shall, in that day it shall be said to Jerusalem, do not fear. Zion, do not let your hands be weak. The Lord your God in your midst, the mighty one will save. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will quiet you with his love and he will rejoice over you with singing. Isn't that a fun fact? according to the Bible, that when we're worshiping God, he'll sing with us. How cool is that, man, to know that we're not just, because sometimes, and maybe it's just me, maybe it's not you guys, maybe you're not like me, sometimes when we pray, it just feels like the prayers aren't even making it past the ceiling. Like it's just like you're hitting a wall. And sometimes um, it gets, it gets uh, discouraging, man, when, when you feel like you're not, communicating with God. And just so you know, you are. We're never out of communication with God. But these times when you can break out in song and and just sing to him, knowing that he's there and he's got plans for you. You know, you try, I try to imagine, um, it's kind of hard to put into words, but having a jam session with Jesus. Just like stumps on the ground or something. He's kicking back there, playing guitar. He's a great guitarist, by the way, and great vocalist as well. And just sit there and sing. You know what? If you, if you just let yourself get into that moment with him, close your eyes and just, even if you're not playing an instrument, you're just singing. You can hear in your spirit, man. It's really a trip when you get into that place of just worship and rejoicing and you kind of put everything out of, you know, the stuff that's going on in your world. It's not going to change that moment unless he chooses to change it. But it's just about you and him plugging in together. I really encourage you guys to find a worship song that you really dig, um, or two or three or something like that, and just get in a quiet place, all right, without the TV blasting, you know, or the dogs biting your leg or whatever, maybe with headphones or something like that. Just try this out throughout this week. Find a quiet place and spend some time with Dad in song. Just song. Just, just sing. You get on your computer and they have the words and everything. And it doesn't matter whether you can sing or not. I've been doing it for 20 or 30 years now and I can't sing. I can get away with it. Amen. So let's just take that moment and see what happens. And then if you're feeling compelled to to talk to God, talk to God, man. And if you're even more compelled to journal, write some stuff down because I'd love to hear how this stuff works out for you guys and the songs that, that brought you into a place like that. Now, the next part is that the lost are watching as well. Or the young people that don't believe. You know, one of the early on, um, when I was first got saved, one of the things that used to trip me out was how into worship people got. And, and I know there's some people that take it, you know, get a little bit carried away and it's more, I don't want to be judgmental, but sometimes they can be kind of putting on a show for everybody around them. But I've seen people worship, man, and uh, it used to trip me out how uh, emotional they would get. And I don't mean like getting all crazy, you know, but man, you could just see on their faces, you know, whether it was joy or sorrow, whatever, whatever was going on, that how powerful worship, and I played in a lot of bars, man, I played all over the country, and it's a totally different vibe when you're playing to people that are worshiping God and people that are worshiping Jack Daniels, <laughs> you know, very different crowd right there, but over the years as, as playing in worship, um, it's just such a trip to see how powerful worship music is, or just singing unto the Lord, this form of worship as we've been going through all this stuff. And he says here in, uh, where are we at? Um, the Lost, is that where we're at, number two? Uh, Psalm 132, I think it is. What is it? Oh, 137, okay. All right, all right, we'll go there. That's cool. Check this one out right here. By the rivers of Babylon... There we sat down, yea, we wept when we remembered Zion. We hung our harps upon the willows in the midst of it, for there, for there those who carried us away captive asked of, asked of us a song, 
And those who plundered us requested mirth, saying, Sing us one of the songs of Zion. And mirth is a word that means to laugh at, to make fun of. And so this psalm is about Israel when they were taken into captivity by, by Babylon, and they just didn't feel like worshiping. And they were prisoners. They were horribly mistreated. And they're like, man, we just, we just hung up our guitars, man. You know, it's, who, could, who could do that? I mean, they don't want to hear our worship. They want to laugh at us. They, wanna, they want us to play, and they want to make us the butt of their jokes because of the situation we're in right now. So, you know, we're just not feeling it, man. Have you ever been in a place in life where you just don't feel like worshiping? And it's a hard place to be. I, I've been there. You know, it, it's, it's tough when life kicks your teeth out, man. And, and you know what needs to happen. You know that you need to, you need to be the one to draw near God. Because he doesn't draw near. He doesn't draw away from us. We draw away from him. And, and the more you get into this attitude, this state of mind, the worse it gets for you. And, and the crazy thing is, you know, you're one prayer away, man. All, He's, he's always faithful. He'll never forsake you, ever. It, it gets in our heads. So the second half of this goes like this. How shall we sing the Lord's song in a foreign land? How are we supposed to do that? How are we supposed to sing when we're upset or we're depressed or we're grieving? How are we supposed to be joyful in that? It never, it never said that that's the only way we worship in joy and happiness. If that was the case, we probably wouldn't worship at all too much sometimes. I don't know about you guys, but life's hard. Sometimes it, things just come up, right? Well, look what he says here in verse 5. If I forget you, O Jerusalem, let my right hand forget its skill. If I do not remember you, let my tongue cling to the roof of its mouth. If I do not exalt Jerusalem above my chief joy. That last part of that verse right there, is about humbling ourselves, pushing our pushing, not allowing our circumstances to get between us and our Father. And we do. We allow our circumstances that that our need for our joy and our fulfillment to get between us and God. And that's craziness right there, man. Because we're the He's the one that's gonna provide, man, and pour out the mercy and pour out the grace and the fulfillment and all that joy. And for us to get in between that because we're not feeling it, man, the, as the Psalms is talking about, he's going, man, if I forget that stuff, take away my hand, man, take away my ability, which is not going to happen for a musician. We're never going to give that stuff up or even a singer. The, the idea of the tongue cleaning the roof of the mouth, they can't sing anymore. They can't talk. If I do this, it says, if I forget, if I do not remember, if I don't exalt Jerusalem, if I don't act like, the believer that I am. If I just get hung up on me. Has anybody ever been hung up on themselves? Nobody in here? Just one or two of you? This is the opera ministry, by the way. The me, 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 me ministry. And it's a lonely ministry because you can only go around for so long whining to people before they don't want to hear you whine anymore. And then you join the back ministry. That's when all you see is people's backs when you walk into a room because they're trying to get out the door on the other side of the room before they have to encounter you. And it's no fun, is it, to get into those blue funks, man, when you're down there. And this is the answer, man. This is the absolute answer. And, and prayer, of course, I mean, I'll never discount prayer. We, we always talk to, talk to God, but sometimes that's so hard to do. Anybody ever had trouble praying to God when their life was kicking their teeth down their throat? It's hard to even know where to start, right? But song is, is something, again, back to that gift, the cadence, the tempo, the words, the melody. These are things that just like from birth we can do. Sometimes talking is very difficult to do. And you notice that the, the scriptures tell us that even in times that we can't pray, the Spirit will intercede for us, right? With, with moanings and groaning. But I've never really come across anywhere that said when you just can't sing, you know, this will take the place for it. It's innate. It's within us, man. It's part of our very soul. I know that heaven's going to be a very musical place. Well, it already is. But I mean, beyond 
what we can ever imagine here, the communication. You know, when you read in, in the New Testament, it says speak to one another in songs and spiritual songs and stuff like that. I never really thought about that because it's like, that'd be kind of weird, you know, walking up to him and like, hello, how are you, my brother in Christ? That's weird, right? Okay. What? Like none of you have ever thought about that? But you know what? You know how we can communicate with each other in that? It's to worship together and sing. And you can always say, hey, man, you got to hear this new song or you got to hear this new band or something like that. And that's how we can remember and that's how we can not forget. And all this goes unto the Lord. And I'll tell you, man, I've had some bad days like we all have in here, you know, and I'll flip on like uh, K-Wave or something like that or whatever and start hearing worship music, man. And it's like soothing and it like blows stuff out. And all of a sudden you can kind of think a little bit clearer and things like that. And then usually um, like a preacher will come on or something like that and there'll be some cool study. There's so much power in song and it's from many moons back uh where was i second second chronicles check this out over second chronicles real quick with me second chronicles something uh no that's not it no 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 we're gonna go to 511 remember we're talking about the lost are watching right so, just so you know, that people know when stuff isn't going well in your life. You know, sometimes people try to hide it. They want to be private and stuff like that. But when you're in a close-knit family like this, um, people just know stuff. It's hard to hide that stuff. But even the world sees that, too. And when that worship is lifting you up, because the world, the lost world... They're looking for answers and solutions, too, just like we are. But we have one up on them. We have Jesus Christ. Amen. And we, we know that he's faithful. So check this out here. And it came to pass when the priests came out of the most holy place, for all the priests who were present had sanctified themselves without keeping to their divisions. And the Levites who were singing, the Levites who were the singers, and all the Asaph and Heman and Jedithan, with their sons and their brethren, stood at the east end of the altar, clothed in white linen, having cymbals, stringed instruments, and harps, and with them 120 priests sounding with trumpets. Indeed, it came to pass when the trumpeters and the singers were as one to make one sound to be heard in, in praising and thanking the Lord. And when they had lifted up their voice with the trumpets and the cymbals and the instruments of the music and praised the Lord, saying, For he is good, his mercy endures forever, that the house the house of the Lord was filled with a cloud so that the priests could not continue ministering because of the cloud for the glory of the Lord filled the house of God. Man. Everything came together. And, you know, we've had those moments, um, not, not all the time, but um, we've had those moments when everything just clicked on stage. The, the instruments were working, the vocals were working, um, We've, we've had times with um, other vocalists here like Sharon, you know, and the back vocals would start kicking in and stuff like that. And you could, from, from here, my perspective, you could see that move right across the church. And we've all been to churches where the worship was just getting powerful and powerful. And it's almost like a wave you can watch just move through an entire church. And that's what was happening here. It just became so powerful. And then his glory filled the church. In this case, this cloud filled the church with his glory, and the, and the priest couldn't do their thing. And, you know, whether, I don't think it's really because they couldn't see, but when you're caught up in that moment of the Holy Spirit, man, that's the glory of God, and you just wanted to go on forever, man. You just wanted to keep going and keep going and keep going. But the idea here, though, is that as we're reading this, it went from one group to another group as these people were on the east side and the, the trumpeters were over there and the singers were over there and, and it started moving throughout the church. We have that ability ourselves to worship in song 
and the people around you will pick up on that stuff and the people around them will pick up on that stuff and that's how that starts to spread and spread and spread within a church family so when, when we are here to worship um we try to worship we you know we um we get to where we have all the words and all that stuff so that people can let that power spread around them. And I encourage you, man, don't be, don't be shy or embarrassed and stuff like that, man. You know, just worship the Lord. He, he never said in his word to worship in perfect pitch, right? He said to, with a joyful noise. And sometimes it is noisy. I get that. I understand. But just knowing that your worship may impact someone next to you, in front of you, behind you, and their worship may impact you as well. And then all of a sudden, it just starts bouncing around, and before you know it, you have one of these moments like this where His glory fills the house of God. Amen? Powerful stuff right there. Last one is this. Worship brings freedom. Absolutely. In all kinds of ways, but I'm going to share with you what happened to Paul over here in Acts, and it goes like this. This is when... Uh, they, they threw him in jail. And it goes, And they brought them to the magistrates and said, These men, being Jews, exceedingly trouble, trouble our city, and they teach custom which are not lawful for us, being Romans, to receive or observe. Then the multitude rose up together against them, and the magistrates tore off their clothes and commanded them to be beaten with rods. And when they had laid many stripes on them, they threw them into prison, commanding the jailer to keep them securely. Having received such a charge, he put them into the inner prison and fastened their feet in the stocks. So this is a prison inside of a prison now. Prison bad enough, horrible, in fact. This would have been like inside deep, you know, where, where they do things, <laughs> you know, in their horrible, torturous things. And filthy dirt floor, chain to the floor, um, horrible conditions to live in, as much as your imagination can muster, that's where, that's where they were. They were chained in with all these criminals and, you know, bad people and no restrooms, stuff like that, you know, horrible food, torture being done. And what was happening, though, but at midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God. And if this situation, I don't think that many of us in this room have probably been in a situation that extreme like that in terms of pain and suffering and, and all that. But our own pain and suffering, the stuff that we go to is just as big, right? We might not be you know, chained to a floor or something like that, but when we're going through stuff with our children or we're grieving somebody that we that went on to be with the Lord or something like that, it can be just as painful, man, being chained to a floor. And so God's Word gives us a way to move through that. And, and it's you know interesting that it, this all happened at midnight because generally when we're going through stuff, aren't we awake at midnight? And one and two o'clock and three o'clock in the morning, just with our thoughts struggling through, just looking at the clock, wishing we could just go back to sleep so we don't have to deal with this stuff. Well, we have something here now, praying and singing hymns to God. But check this out. And the prisoners were listening to them. People are watching. You know why they watch us, man? Because they assume, and rightly so for the most part, that we know something that they don't know. They're struggling through hopelessly. They don't have any direction to move, man. But they're like those Christians, you know, they go through a lot of stuff too, but they seem to always come out smiling. So let's see what they're doing. And that's just human nature to try to find something that works, right? Well, these prisoners were listening to all this stuff. It might not have made their life any better because they were all chained to the floor too. You know, and the guards come by and clock them with a club or something like that. I don't know, pull their toenails out, whatever it was they were doing. But verse 26 happened. Suddenly, there was a great earthquake, so that the foundations of the prison were shaken, and immediately all the doors were opened. That would have been a miraculous thing right there, right? There, these guys are worshiping earthquakes. Earthquakes aren't uncommon, you know, here, here or there. 
And you know, if it shook, if it shook enough, yeah, the doors could probably pop open, right? We've all probably been in earthquakes here in California, at least some of us have. But the next verse is where the miracle happened. Check this out. It says that the prison was shaken and immediately all the doors were open and everyone's chains were loosed. Yeah, I can get the door popping open from a building shaking. Has anybody ever, just probably not, but I'm just going to go with it because, again, me, not you guys. Has anybody ever been handcuffed in here? Yeah. One or two of you? Okay. Anybody ever had the leg irons on, the shackles on the legs and stuff like that? Okay, I knew you were going to raise your hand, man. <laughs> kind of a no-brainer. Now, I've been in jail once or twice. <laughs> and I honestly could see an earthquake happening in a jail door opening. You know, buildings shake, they rock, they do all that stuff. But... I cannot in my wildest dreams imagine how an earthquake could get me out of handcuffs, man, or leg irons. That just ain't going to happen, man. Though what was going on here is God orchestrated this thing in such a beautiful way that these people were in such a dire situation, man, and they were chained, you know, where, where they got to, back in these days, I'm sure they had to pound pins out or something like that, you know, to get these Matt, they're like the, well, like these things right here. And the ones I got hanging over by my door. I mean, it's not like the, the nice, comfortable ones they put on you nowadays. Okay, apparently you guys haven't had handcuffs lately. They're not comfortable anymore now than they ever were. He orchestrated this so that these people in the middle of the night could hear these two Christians singing and praying and worshiping God and whatever was going through these people's minds as they were watching, I think they were lunatics or, or they got some relief from it or maybe they were being irritated by it, you know, because they kept singing and worshiping God. And then all of a sudden this thing happens and everything's shaking. And that would have been pretty normal, you know, um, expected, n natural, if you will. But then the supernatural happened. When these manacles fell off all these prisoners, because these were the worst of the worst of the prisoners in the, in the inner sanctum, the inner part of there. And that would have been the point where murderers were released. You know, they could have got up and started hacking each other, gone and killed people as they were running out of there. But look what happened. It said that, and the keeper of the prison awakened from sleep and seeing the prison doors open, supposing the prisoners had fled, drew his sword and was about to kill himself. Because in these days, if, if a prisoner escaped under your watch, you got what they were going to get. So someone was going to, you know, again, back in those days, you know, it was pretty much the sword, you know. And so he supposed that because the doors were open and nobody was running, you know, like trying to escape, you know, and all the screaming and rigmarole, he thought they were already gone, man. And so he pulled his sword out because the next thing that's going to happen for that boy is some big old centurions are going to come in there with soldiers and stuff like that, and he's getting it, right? So, but then Paul called out with a loud voice saying, do not do yourself no harm for we're all here. I don't know if you can get the gravity of the situation right now. These people were the worst of the worst with an opportunity to get away, to escape. And none of them did it because of the way that dad orchestrated this thing with the worship, the prayer, and the miracle of the, of the manacles coming off of them, man. And it all came through Paul and Silas's ability to still sing and worship him in the darkest of their days, man. We just don't know who's paying attention to us. It could be your neighbor, man. It could be your children or a spouse or something like that. And, and I know it's hard to do, but I promise you, based on the word of God, that God answers worship in song, I mean, as well as God answers prayer. God's always listening to everything that's going on in our hearts and our minds. So then he called for a light, ran in and fell down trembling before Paul and Silas, and he brought them out and said, sirs, what must I do to be saved? I want to be like you guys, man. I wasn't even in here when all that stuff happened, but I'm looking at some of the most hardened criminals in our area right now, and they all look different to me right now. 
They don't look as violent and deadly. There's something that changed. And so they said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved, you and your household. And he went on to take them home and doctored them all up where the, their stripes where they were whipped. And the guy's whole family ended up getting saved because these two men understood the power of worship and song. And all the other guys, too, that were in that prison, too. We don't get the record of what actually happened to all of them, but we certainly can kind of take a shot in the dark on this one that they had an opportunity to run away, and they didn't. And by not running away from that jail, they ran straight into the arms of Christ. Amen? Good stuff right there. There's just a lot of power in this worship. And I'm kind of going, I understand from a little bit of a negative side when we're struggling through stuff, but that's because of the power in worship and song. So imagine if you're not struggling through stuff too much, where that would take you to. Look at uh, Psalm 100 with me real quick, and I'll show you something else here. We're almost done here. He says here in Psalm 100, worship brings freedom. Make a joyful shout to the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. So as we're, we're bringing this stuff, look, we don't have to trip on having all the answers, man, to life. And don't we do that? Don't we try to navigate everything and plan and plot so we can move through this and then we struggle we hit a wall and stuff like that because maybe we're not inquiring on him not because we don't want to but because we get so wrapped up in that opera ministry that we can handle and he goes look stop make a joyful shout to the lord everybody sing with gladness come before his presence with singing bring yourself right to the face of god man he goes look and know that the lord he's god and not us amen and he goes on to say that. It is he who made us and not we ourselves. As soon as we can really get that into our heart and, and through worship and song that he's the king, not us. And he loves us unconditionally, man. He absolutely adores us and has big important things for us. As soon as we can get this, that we're the sheep of his pasture, he's the shepherd. And what does the shepherd do? The shepherd leads, man. All we got to do is follow him. And look what it says here. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and unto his courts with praise and be thankful to him and bless his name for the Lord is good. And his mercy is everlasting and his truth endures to all generations. So all this stuff that was talked about 3,500 years ago, it's all relevant and true to this day for every man and woman in this church right here. Amen. And we can enter into his gates. And what does that mean? Yeah, certainly coming to church and stuff like that. Entering into his presence with thanksgiving, man. You know, when we come in with that worship, there's so much we can be thankful for. We've got to get hung up on the junk, man, whether it's bills or relationships, you know, jobs and things like that. We kind of, sometimes we, we only approach him when we're in the valleys, man. And, and that's cool. You know, he, he promised to be in that valley with us. But you know what? If we get into this place where we can enter the gates with thanksgiving, right off the bat, Lord, I'm just thank, thank you that I'm alive. I got to see my granddaughters today, man, and that was super cool. We went to a recycling center and recycled a bunch of stuff, had a total blast, and we lasered a couple little um, coasters and stuff like that. I am so thankful for that time that I got to spend with my granddaughter, man. It was just, like, precious. So I can enter into his court, courts with praise. That's what I got to do before church today. And I know that it doesn't seem like a lot, maybe, but to me, it means everything, man, that I got to spend time with my little girls, man, because I don't get to see them as much as I'd like to. And the Lord is good, verse 5, for the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting, and His truth endures for all generations. And you know, the legacy that we leave behind, those girls are... 100% Jesus freaks, man. Absolute. And to be able to, I'm not taking credit for it, amen. That's God's all glory to God, amen. But to know that some decisions that I made in my life led my sons 
and then my grandchildren in that direction, man. And to, to watch them grow up in the Lord at, you know, eight, nine, ten years old, I didn't start until I was 36 or something like that, man. You know, and that's cool. That was God's plan for my life. But when I look at them, it's like, man, what are they going to be in 30 years from now? You know, how powerful are they going to be? And they sing worship songs to the Lord already, and they love them. I was looking at that. They're so young, but they worship with all their hearts. Amen? So here's the last one here that brings all this power that I'm talking about here, all the, the how worship, it makes everything better. It makes us healthier. Um, we feel better. We're fulfilled. We can be content. We can, we can be so much just in, in the worship, but the power that it gives us to set people free is important because the more that we understand how what worship does in our own lives, the more we can share it with other people. Just like the word of God, the more we know, the more we can share it with other people, right? We're not just out there beating people up with the Bible. We can be like, man, check it out. This is where I was and this is where I am. And all glory goes to God. I've already proven it before Christ how to screw up a life successfully. And I was very good at it, as a matter of fact. When I chose to give all the glory to God and say, you know what? I clearly am not doing a real good job successfully in my life. Here I am, send me. And then boom, the train took off. You know, and here we are. Shoot, um, 29 years longer than I thought I was going to live. <laughs> Who knew, right? I definitely would have took better care of myself. <sighs> Check out Psalm 61 the power that we all have. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prisons to those who are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to console those who mourn in Zion, to give them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they may be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. And that's how we do it, because we navigate through this life through him, through worship, through prayer, through the study of his word, singing the songs unto him that, that build us up and strengthen us up, that we might go to these people that are doing the same thing we were doing 10 years ago or 20 years ago. They're struggling through life, man. But maybe they're in it right now. And it doesn't mean that Christians are immune, right? If you lose somebody that you love, Man, it can, it can rock your world, can it? Well, you know what? That's where we all come in. To circle the wagons, is what we call it around here. Circle the wagons and praise. I know that, that years and years ago, um, Bulldog's wife, Shelly, um, was, was battling cancer. And she wanted to hear worship music. We took the whole band to her house and set it up in her living room. And we just started worshiping and playing worship music. And she was, she was so weak, she couldn't get up or sing or nothing like that. And somewhere in the middle of knocking on heaven's door, she went home to be with the Lord, right where we were playing. And we just kept playing and worshiping. And um, they, they grieved. But that was one of the most powerful worship times I've ever had in my life. I'll never forget that as long as I live. You could feel the peace come over that room when she breathed her last and then she was with Jesus. That it was just powerful, man. I can't, it's it's really hard to describe, but we have that ability as believers on Christ to give that blessing to other people that are going through stuff. And not only, like I said, not only when it's bad, when people are celebrating, man, we have that ability to also celebrate with them through worship. And it's okay to find cool worship songs and email them to people. Did you know that? Or text them to people. Go, hey, check out this cool song. And boop. You can really bless someone's whole day like this. This is where he wraps it up here. And they shall rebuild old ruins. They shall raise up former desolations. And they shall repair old ruined cities. Desolation of many generations. Strangers shall stand and feed your flocks. And the sons of the foreigners shall be your plowmen and your vine dressers. But you shall be named in the priest. You shall be named the priest of the land. They shall call you 
the servants of your God, and you shall eat the riches of the Gentiles, and in their glory you shall boast. Instead of your shame, you shall have double honor, and instead of confusion, they shall rejoice in their portion. Therefore, in the land that they shall possess double, everlasting joy shall be theirs. It's not just us. It's them. Even people that are enemies that you struggle with, you might have a rub against, stuff like that. The power of worship and song can heal you. And then they might be healed as well if they choose. It all starts with us, us individually and how we worship unto God. And we've learned a whole bunch of different things about worship. But I'm sharing with you tonight the power of worshiping him in song. Give it a try. I encourage you all to find a quiet place. Maybe it's your car. I don't know. My truck is, a, is kind of my little bubble from the world, man. I really like my truck a lot. Those really cushy Chevy seats. And I can just cruise down the road, man, listening to music. I love, I love listening to music. Find somewhere quiet and see how it works out. And let me know. I really want to know if you guys find a quiet place and you can worship God and you can just sing unto him. What happens for you? You break into prayer. Do you get a revelation from him about something that's going on in your life? I really want to know, man, because it's super important. Here's the application night. Worship in song is powerful and pleasing to dad's heart. And he sings with us. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank you tonight for your word, Lord. And Lord, I've always known how powerful music is, Father, and, and song and the written word, Lord. And I thank you for all that you've done all these years and here at the Roadhouse and all over the world, Father, how you've given us this amazing gift of song in worship to you, Lord. And, I, and tonight, Lord, I, my prayer is that maybe if there's folks here that have never been really exposed to that, that you would, you'd reveal that to them as we move through this weekend, Lord, and maybe this week, that you'd help them to find these, these songs that they might just spend some time with you in worship and worship just move to a whole nother level here, Lord. And, and the most important thing tonight, Lord, is that everybody knows your Son and Savior, that they can even begin that, that worship that we talk about tonight. So we ask your Holy Spirit to move through this room and move out through that camera out there, Lord, to seek out those that are, that are seeking out your Son right now, Lord, that are struggling in life, that feel hopeless, Lord, that they're brokenhearted, I'm just broken right now, Lord, that tonight is their night, Lord, that this whole thing was orchestrated so that they might know your Son as Savior. So Lord, as we pray, Lord, I ask that your Holy Spirit move through this room in a powerful way. In Jesus' name, let's pray. Father God, I sin against you, Lord, and I ask you to forgive me of my sin. And Jesus, I invite you into my heart to be the Lord and Savior of my life, to fill me with your Holy Spirit. And put me on that road that you'll have me travel. Amen? Amen? Let's give the Lord some praise. He's awesome. Find a worship song this weekend. Amen? And if you find something cool, text it over to me. Or text it to somebody else. There's, there's a lot of people going through stuff right now in our church that need that power to be pushed toward them. Amen? You might be one of those people too. So you start pushing, other people start pushing. Amen? I will see you guys uh, when... Okay, Tuesday. Till then, keep your eyes on Jesus. God bless you guys. Have a great weekend.